you know, there are many things I do to promote my longevity and slow down my aging as much as possible. I've made an entire video about my routine and some of the dietary principles that I follow, but there are some things that give me most of the results and that are more effective than the other things. So in this video, I'm going to outline the three most important and most powerful things that I think have enabled me to achieve one of the slowest speeds of aging in the world. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. So the first thing that is one of the cornerstones of my dietary routine and my entire daily routine is intermittent fasting, also known as time-restricted eating. I've been doing intermittent fasting for 10 years since I was 18 years old, and it has had a very positive effect on all aspects of my health. But it's not that I'm just doing intermittent fasting and I'm like skipping meals. Yes, there are some longevity benefits and mechanisms by just doing that. If you just skip a few meals every day, at least one meal a day, then you would see some positive effects on your longevity and health as well. But the most powerful way to do intermittent fasting for longevity and slowing down aging is to do earlier time restricted eating. Early time restricted eating means that you eat earlier in the day. And instead of having a late dinner, you actually have an earlier dinner. Now, traditionally, the early time restricted eating refers to just having breakfast and lunch and maybe like an afternoon dinner or something like that and you usually stop eating around 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. something like that. Now you don't necessarily need to do like a very early time restricted eating window. I personally stop eating at 5 p.m. That gives me around four hours of digestion before I go to bed. The most important thing is that you just don't go to bed on a full stomach. First of all, it can have a negative effect on your sleep. It can increase your heart rate when you're sleeping, but it also disrupts some of the longevity highway train that I like to call that happens in your sleep. All of the longevity pathways inside the body, such as DNA repair, cell clearance through autophagy, NAD recycling, sirtuins, and all the other longevity pathways ways are linked to melatonin, the sleep hormone. Melatonin is the most powerful antioxidant in your body. And if you don't produce enough melatonin when you are sleeping, then uh, that does have a negative effect on your longevity. We see that the older you get, the less melatonin you produce. The elderly people sleep less, they sleep worse, and because of that, they start to age much faster as well. The biggest thing that disrupts your melatonin is obviously light and exposure to blue light, especially before bed. But eating too late can also disrupt this process to a certain extent. And if your body has to spend a lot of time and energy on digesting the food that you just ate, then it doesn't have enough energy to conduct the repair processes. I would just recommend you to try it. Try to go to bed on a slightly emptier stomach. Obviously, you don't, you don't want to be ravenous and starving. That can also be very difficult for you to fall asleep. But if you just go to bed on a light stomach, like you just ate maybe five or four hours ago and your stomach is relatively empty, you're not feeling heavy or nothing at all, then at least me, I always sleep very well on a slightly emptier stomach. So I think earlier time restricted eating in the way that you just stop eating at least four to five hours before bed is quite critical for stimulating and activating all the longevity pathways that happen in your sleep and making sure that you do actually go through these processes that help you to slow down aging and repair the body. The second very crucial important for slowing down aging with your diet is getting enough methyl donors from your food. All these biological age tests, they're actually DNA methylation tests. They measure your DNA methylation patterns and based on that, they tell you your age based on the average population. DNA methylation is the process of adding methyl donors to your DNA and then conducting epigenetics. With proper DNA methylation, you activate the longevity pathways and with poor methylation, you basically start to age faster and your health will deteriorate. One of the best methyl donors that you want to get from your food are trimethylglycine or TMG, choline, B12, folate, and creatine as well as glycine. We actually also have two human case studies where they followed a diet heavy on these DNA methylation donors and they did see an age reversal in the DNA methylation age score. Winning. Some of the highest food sources of trimethylglycine are beetroot, wheat germ, wheat bran, and different kinds of vegetables. B12 and choline you can get exclusively from animal products and folate you can get from leafy green vegetables. And the last key component to my slower speed of aging is high frequency exercise. We know that exercise is important for longevity. We know that people who exercise have reduced risk of mortality, reduced risk of chronic diseases. So exercise obviously increases your metabolic health, increases your body composition, increases your fitness status, all those things. But exercise also activates these longevity pathways. And I believe that the aspect of high frequency training, which means that doing exercise more often is more important than exercising really hard, 
and then resting or doing nothing at all. What it means is that you follow lower intensity physical activity most of the day, such as walking and then having shorter bouts of higher intensity training. That would include going to the gym, doing calisthenics, lifting something heavy, sprints, hit intervals, etc. Unfortunately, in the modern world, the modern fitness industry is also centered around just doing this high intensity training for many hours. People sit in offices, people sit in front of the computer for four to six to eight hours a day, and then they go to the gym to exercise for one to two hours very intensely. Yes, of course, it's better than nothing at all. It's obviously better than being sedentary all the time, but the human body flourishes under chronic low intensity movement. We want to be staying in motion all throughout the day as much as possible and then exercise very shortly and intensely. That's why my personal workouts aren't that long. I usually, when I go to the gym, I work out around 45 minutes. And if I do cardio, I also do it for 45 to 60 minutes. I definitely promote a lifestyle that includes strength training, high intensity cardio and regular cardio as well. But I don't think that it's very beneficial to do high intensity training or heavy training every day for several hours. The chronic overtraining aspect is something that actually starts to age you faster, starts to wear down your body and starts to affect your heart health in a negative way. If these were to be the only changes you make to your lifestyle, which means that earlier time or good eating or you just eat dinner a few hours earlier, you add more methyl donors into your diet and you exercise more frequently, then you would see some reductions, but just by implementing these things as well. Of course, there are many other things that I do into my routine. Of course, there are some supplements I take. You can check out my previous videos about those things. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.